Great. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as I said before. Um, so uh, in, in this hour, uh, or in this 50 minute, um, uh, the plan is to co uh, cover the equivalent of, of uh, sections three, four, and five of the, um, of the notes. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, so the first, yeah, section three is the shortest one, which is um, sort of a connect, which is a connection of regularity with the flatness of the Cabinius. Um, uh, the, the fourth section is, is called, just called tight closure, I guess. Um, and it's, uh, of course, the longest section of the, of the, of the document. <laughs> and uh, section five is, um, is going to be about module finite extensions of domains and how that works. In tight okay. So, uh, as you see, I sort of uh, pre-loaded some, th some, uh, uh, some things. So, um, if I write in green, does this make sense? Or is yeah. that? OK, great. OK. So, uh, regularity and the flatness of the Frobenius. I wrote F flatness, but nobody says that. Anyway. Um, so um, it might seem so regularity, right? The right, what, what, what's a regular local range? It's that if uh, you know the, the the maximal ideal is generated by d elements, where d is the uh, curl dimension of the ring, doesn't seem like it should have anything to do with the Frobenius. But if you have a ring of characteristic p, it actually has everything to do with the Frobenius, um, because um, uh, Kuntz proved in I guess 1969, yeah. Um, that if R is a reduced Noetherian ring of prime characteristic, and actually you don't even need reduced for what I, for, for, for that, but I, anyway, because it'll it'll come, it comes out in the in the, in the proof, whatever. Um, let R be a reduced uh, ring Noetherian ring of characteristic P. Um, then R is regular if and only if the Frobenius endomorphism is flat. And by that means, you know, F lower star R is flat over R. I mean, since we're reduced, um, we'll just say R to the one over P is flat as an unmodule. Okay, I'm not gonna prove this whole theorem um, because we're really only gonna need one direction of it, I think, throughout the whole course, um, and that's the the forward direction um, that regular rings uh, have flat um, Frobenius. That, 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 that if you're a regular ring, um, then R1 over P is a flat R module. Now, a regular ring is always reduced because it's it's uh, you know it's, it's normal, um, and so it's a product of uh, finitely many normal domains. Um, and so we can we can talk about R1 over P in this context. We don't have to talk about reduced anyway. Whatever. Um, so, so I, we're, we're just going to prove the, the uh, forward direction, and I'm going to sort of prove it in cases that kind of build on each other. So, um, so first of all, um, you know, the first regular rings that, that, that people really, you know, care about are um, polynomial rings in some number of variables over a field. And it turns out that this is going to end up being a base case that we can build on. Um, so suppose that R is uh, such a ring. So that means it's k bracket x1 through xd, where k is a field of characteristic p. Um, OK, so now let's look at r and r1 over p. You just take everything to the 1 over p about it. So k one over p, I mean, it's it's actually going to be a field extension of k. Um, um, k is perfect; it's just k. But anyway, um, so so this is the this is uh, isomorphic to the Frobenius map, basically. Um, and um, well, let me just um, and uh, I claim that this map factors in the following useful way. Um, uh, first of all, you extend the coefficients of the polynomials. 
and then uh, you throw in the all the peak powers of the, of the peak roots of the variables. Um, so let's call these snaps alpha and beta. Um, so um, alpha is free uh, on a vector space basis of k1 over p over k. Right? Um, if you take a polynomial in, you know, let's call this S. So you take a polynomial in S, um, you, you, can, you can sort of split out, like, um, uh, look at it as, as a, um, uh, uh, and you take a vector space basis of k1 over p over, over k, uh, you can express it as like a, as an R linear combination of elements of that basis. Um, okay. So um, now beta is free. Uh, and by, by saying the morphism is free, I just mean that the, that the target is free as a module on the source on, on, that, on, that, on that basis. Um, so beta is free on the basis um, x1 to the uh, i1 over p, x2 to the i2 over p, dot, 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 xd to the id over p, where um, each ij is less than, is, is between 0 and p minus 1. So that's a basis of, of p to the d. So, so it's, it's a free module. Um, R1 over p is, is free over s on, um, on this uh, p to the d uh, basis elements. Um, right? If you take a polynomial in these, uh, in, in these variables over here, um, if you think about it, it is, uh, uh, you, you can express it as, as, a, as an s linear combination of these guys. Because once you get to, you know, once any of these coefficients get to like uh, one, then, then you, can, you can factor that out as an element of S. Um, okay. So um, therefore, um, therefore, hence R1 over P, is free, hence flat, as an R module by basically combining those bases. Okay, so this is very, very concrete. Hopefully, um, okay. So, uh, so that's the polynomial case. It's very, very concrete. Now let's do the complete case. Um, so, um, let's say. R is a complete Ethereum local ring. Um, uh, not characteristic P, everything's characteristic P. Okay. Um, then by the Cohen structure theorem, I assume you guys know that. But the Cohen structure theorem, among other things, says that if you have a, a, um, a complete local ring that contains a field, um, then uh, it is actually, and it's regular, a regular complete local ring that contains a field, then it is actually isomorphic to a, a power series ring in that set of variables. Um, so R is actually isomorphic to a double bracket x1 to xd uh, for some field k, of characters to p, of course. Um, so, um, so now let's look at this um, uh, map from, it, it, this looks sort of familiar, hopefully, k, x1, or it's, it's just we're putting double brackets instead of single brackets. It won't be free anymore, actually. But, um, uh, but it is, it is going to be flat because um, this map is kind of a faithfully flat, um, well, it's, it's the completion of the following map. So, 
So, and that map is just a localization of the map that we know is flat. Right. So this is flat, and therefore this is basically flat. And therefore this is basically flat. Um, okay, so now let's do uh, the local case. Okay, um, so um, let's say that R is a regular local ring. Okay. Um, then what you have is that then R, then, um, then you can make a similar diagram. So R hat is k double bracket x1 to xb. Well, I don't even have to write that, but it's true. Um, and R hat to the 1 over p, it's easy to show that this is actually uh, R1 over p hat. This is flat, faithfully flat. This is faithfully flat. This is faithfully flat. And therefore, this is faithfully flat. And the general case, um, so, let, so what's the general case? That's where R is a regular ring, not necessarily local. Um, um, then what you have is that Rm is a regular local ring for all maximum ideals M. Um, and so um, Rm, Rm, 1 over p is flat by the local case. But uh, this is the same, to work it out, as r1 over p m. So since flatness is a local property, r1 over p is flat over r. Right, so basically you, do, you, you, you localize, um, you go up to the complete case, you go down to the polynomial case, and then, and then you sort of go back to the diagram. Okay. Um, so that's the easy direction. I'm not gonna prove the hard direction of Prince's theorem, which is that, that if the Fermi's is flat, then it forces the ring to be regular. Um, but this, 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 this is, I think, all we're gonna need. Okay. Um, I think it's yeah, it's, it's really interesting that there's that there's this connection at all, and it really comes from as we see the cone structure theorem. Okay, so corollary, uh, let R be regular, and let I and J be ideals of R. Um, then for any power uh, Q of P, um, we have I Q colon J Q equals I colon J Q. And with the proof, well, right here. Now, if you first colon and then you take bracket powers, it's the same thing as if you took bracket powers and then you colon. Uh, very false in uh, any other kind of ring. Um, so um, uh, this, the, the proof of this is going to rest on the following proposition, which I call Bourbaki flatness, because uh, as far as I know, this, this um, result was first stated as an exercise in Bourbaki's uh, algebra commutative, forgive my French pronunciation. Uh, and um, 
uh, it's, um, you know, it, it really is, is, uh, is an exercise that comes from the equational criteria for flatness. So I won't prove this, but I think this, is, this should be seen as one of the basic ways to think about, about flatness of modules over a ring. Uh, he even states a version of it for non-commutative rings, but well, let's assume ours commutative, so I don't have to worry about left modules and right modules and left ideals and so on. Um, and, and we're assuming that ours is Ethereum, so I don't have to say which ideals are finitely generated. There's that there, but anyway. Um, if you're a, a Ethereum commutative ring an R mod, and you have an R module M, it's flat if and only if for all ideals I and J, uh, I am colon um, J, right? So the elements of M, that J multiplies into I am is the same as um, the uh, as if you take I colon J and you extend it to M. So the right hand side is always contained in the left hand side for, for any module, uh, but the left hand and the right hand side is actually a characterization of flatness of a module. Uh, and it's enough to take J being principal ideals. Um, and uh, in the non-Ethereum case, you have to uh, you have to restrict J to being finitely generated ideals. But anyway, um, okay. So proof of corollary. So why does this prove that uh, that colon power that colon that bracket powers commute with uh, with colons? Um, so here's why. Uh, okay. So um, so first of all. Uh, this is always true. Well, um, you know, I'll just do it this way. So, so let's take Q fruits. <laughs> uh, it's regular, so everything's reduced. So, um, So like this was, this is one, this is from exercise one. Um, and then this is Borbaki flatness and the uh, theorem about, and Kunz's theorem says that, well, could, um, uh, uh, I, R1 of repeating flat make, means by iteration, R1 over Q is as well, because that's your iterate of the previous map. Okay. Um, And then uh, you can work out that this is the same as IQ colon JQ. Okay. And then uh, and then you take Q powers and then you have you have the, the, the result. Uh, you can work it out element wise later if you want. Um, it, uh, I've given you the, the, the real ingredients. Okay. So tight closure. Um, Craig did me the favor of, of defining it, um, or he defined it for, um, for for ideal anyway. So okay. So uh, so first of all, the notation R not. He didn't define that notation. Um, um, so another notation is that uh, I'm going to say min. R R minimal primes of R and max R is the maximum ideals. Okay. So R naught is R my is the complement of the union of the minimal primes of R. That's a multiplicative set um, because the complement of the union of any set of primes is a multiplicative set. Um, and if you have a inclusion of R modules and an element Z of M. Then Z is in the tight closure of L and M. If there's a Q naught, a power of P such that for all Q bigger than or equal to Q naught, um, sorry. If there's a C in R naught and a Q naught such that for all Q bigger than or equal to Q naught, uh, C times ZQM is in LQ. So it's the same thing that he uh, defined for ideals, except I'm 
taking bracket powers and bracket with bracket powers in a module. So, um, um, so okay. So proposition: type closure is a functorial closure operation on the category of, and you want to say of, of R modules. I don't know that that's true in this generality for an Ethereum ring, but it is true on the category of finitely generated R modules. Um, it's, it's functorial. I just don't know that it's a closure operation. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that it's item potent. Uh, it is true if, it, if there's a test element, um, as we'll see uh, in the next hour. Um, moreover, um, the Frobenius closure of L and M, sorry, is always contained in the text. Okay. So what do we want to show? We want to show that uh, the, the the in fact this definition gives you. A, a sub module at, at all. Um, and uh, so why is that? Um, let X and Y be an L star M um, and let R be an R. And when I want to show that X plus R Y is in L star M, um, then there is, exists a Q naught, but uh, there's a, exists, let's say, a C naught and C1 and R naught. Q not Q1 powers of P um, such that for all Q bigger than or equal to Q not uh, C X or C not X to the Q is in LQM and for all Q bigger than or equal to Q1 C1 X C1 Y to the QM is in LQM so let C equal the product of C naught C1 and let um, uh, Q2 be the maximum of Q naught and Q1. Uh, then for all Q bigger than or equal to Q2, C times X plus RY to the Q um, is what C X Q M plus R to the Q C Y Q M. And then both of these things are in LQM and so the right. And that's all for all Q bigger than equal to Q2. Um, hence uh, X plus RY is in the L star M. Okay. So this is a submodule. Um, so if L is so L contained in L star M, so take C equals one and yeah, just take C equals one. Uh, if X is in L, then X to the QM is in, you know, LQ at right. Anyway, um, uh, and then for this, uh, just use the fact that K to the Q is in L to Q. Okay. So um, item potence. Uh, so this is the one where we need uh, finite generation of the of the models. Um, so, um, so we just have to show that the left-hand side is in the right-hand side. Um, and what? There's C and R naught. And, uh, and a Q naught, such that C, Z to the Q, Q, M, for all Q bigger than the Q naught. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, let Z1 through Zn uh, be the generate be a generating set for L star M. Then there exists what Q1 through Qn and C1 through Cn in R naught, such that for all Q bigger than or equal to QI for each I. C Z I to the Q is in L Q M. Um, so right, so let C be the product, or let C prime be the product of C times C one times dot 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 times C N. Uh, D be that, be that, that first product. Um, 
can Q prime be the maximum of Q naught Q1 dot 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 Qn. Uh, then you know what C D you could show yeah C D Z Q M is contained in what uh, D times L star M Q M, which is then contained in L Q M. This is for all Q prime. Okay. But you see how we use the fact that it's um uh, that's finally generated. That L star M is finally generated. Um, which it is because M is finitely generated and L star M is a submodule of it and R is Ethereum. Um, so functoriality. Um, so let L contain an M and N be finitely generated R modules. Um, let G from M to N be R linear. And let Z in L star M. Um, uh, and again, what C is an R naught, Z uh, um, Q naught is a power of P, and for all Q base is a Q naught, C Z to the Q M is in L Q M. So um, we have C times G of Z Q um, N by the um, uh, uh, exercises is C times F E star of G of ZQM, um, which is in F E star of F E star of G. So I should say equals F E star of G of CQM, CZQM, um, which is in F E star of F E star of G of LQM, which again by the exercise is contained in, I guess it equals uh, G of L QN. So what do we have? C times this element QN is in G of L QN uh, for, all, for all Q for the some fixed C and hence G of Z is in, L, is in G of L star N. So it's functorial. And then finally for the Frobenius closure claim, let's you, you know, use C equals one and, uh, you know, well, it should be, but let me not flip. Okay, so let's, Z is an LFM. That means there exists a Q naught such that Z of the Q naught is in L Q naught M. And that means that for all Q bigger than or equal to Q naught, what do we have? Z Q M is equal to Z Q naught M. Uh, Q over Q naught, if that's a power of P, um, F E naught star of M, um, which is then in L Q naught M, Q over Q naught, F E naught star of M. And, and by the exercises, this is L Q M. So hence with C equals one, that implies this is in L star. Okay. Um, so remark, the only place where we needed uh, 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 the module to be finitely generated was in showing item potents. And we're gonna just be able to dispense with that later with, uh, with test elements. Um, okay. Um, if you have a reading for that, it does have test elements. Okay, so lemma in R, um, like if you take the zero ideally to R, tight closure of zero and the tight and the Frobenius closure of zero are the same as the nil radical of the ring. Um, so, uh, so let X be in the tight closure of zero. Um, and so what you have, CXQ is zero for all, so there's a C in R naught. Such that this is true for all the Q. Um, 
but for all minimal prime. What uh, P C isn't in P, so X to the Q is in P. Um, thus, X is in the intersection of those P's, which is the no radical. Uh, so, and uh, so the tight closure is contained in the nil radical, and then I want to show that nil radical is contained in the Frobenius closure. So if X is in the Frobenius closure of, of zero, then there's a Q, oh, sorry. And then I want to show that X is in, if X is in the nil radical, then it's in the Frobenius closure. So there's a, I'm going to say that there's an N such that X to the Q is zero, actually N is zero. So let Q be bigger than or equal to N then x to the q is zero, uh, which is the q's bracket power of zero. So therefore, x is in the Frobenius closure. So tight closure is contained in radical, radical is contained in Frobenius closure, and Frobenius closure is contained in tight closure when it comes to the zero ideal. Um, OK. So the next um, results are pretty technical. So I'm going to call this thing a pack lemma pack for um, prime avoidance containment. Um, in results that I've read, this isn't stated separately as a lemma, but it's basically the tool that one uses to prove the, uh, this thing. Um, so if you let R, R be an inferior ring and takes any um, finite collection of prime ideals uh, that where there's no containment relation between them. So generally, you're talking, taking the minimal primes, but you didn't, don't have to for this lemma. Um, uh, take non-zero elements of these um, residue class integral domains, um, uh, then um, you can lift each of those elements uh, to the complement of the unit of those primes. And, and uh, moreover, if you take uh, some elements um, in like all the primes but one and take the linear combination of these TIs with these CIs, you get inside of that you're, you're outside of the unit of, of those primes. So it's just, you know, it, it's kind of weird. So I've got the proof in the, in the notes. And that allows us to, as it turns out, uh, construct a proof, uh, which again, I'm gonna <laughs> uh, not prove because of time, um, but you can believe that this is gonna allow you to prove things like this, hopefully. <laughs> so let L and M be R modules and take an element C of M, then Z is in L star M, and only if for each minimal prime B of R, the image of Z is in, so you can look at L plus PM mod PM, uh, and you can think of that as a submodule of M mod PM, an, an R mod P submodule, where tight closure is taken over R mod P. Uh, and Z bar is the image of Z in M mod P. And it really does follow from this pack lemma. Um, and here's another thing. Um, so omitted this pack lemma. It's one of these things that I think is just easier to follow by, um, you know, by hand anyway.
So, and then I have a proposition in the notes that says uh, uh, ways that you can compute tight closure and like using all Q and so on. Okay. So the next uh, result um, is um, actually what we're showing is that the tight closure contained in the uh, integral closure. I um, I wasn't planning to introduce integral closure separately, um, but actually um, uh, in in um, so. But but it's but anyway, it's the important thing here is that it's in the is in in the in the radical. Um, so um, I'm going to say first reduce to the domain case. So if uh, x is an i star, what you have x bar is an i r mod p. Star for all p in the main r. If you knew the domain case, then you would know that x bar was in the radical of i r mod p in r mod p. Um, uh, And hence, for any uh, prime ideal containing P plus I, um, X is in Q. But any prime ideal contains P, any prime ideal that contains I contains some P plus I. Um, So for all Q that contains I, X is in Q, right? Um, so therefore, X is in this. Um, so now let's show that. Um, so there's an error in the notes. OK. <laughs> so, so now let's assume that R is an integral domain. Um, so let X be in. So I claim that it's enough to show that prime ideals are, are uh, tightly closed um, because the radical of an ideal is the intersection of the prime ideals of, of the prime ideals that contain it. Um, so now let P be a prime ideal. Um, and let X be in the tight closure P. Um, and let's choose a DVR between R and its fraction field um, such that we we'll call it VM, such that M intersect R is P. Um, and what you have, there's a non-zero C in R such that for all bigger, for all very big Q, CX to the Q is in PQ, which is contained in MQ. And so that means if you take this valuation, value of C plus Q times the value of X is bigger than or equal to the value of M to the Q, which is just Q. And so that means that the value of C over Q plus the value of X is at least one for all big Q, but since this, these, these all are all integers, uh, that means the value of X is at least one, which means that X is in M, but that it's also in R, which is, hence, um, for any ideal I, uh, I is contained, uh, so I star is contained in the intersection of the primate of the P star such that P contains I, but then that's the intersection of the P's that contain I, which is 
it's just a map of the line. So, all right. Um, the above actually shows um, I is contained, I star is contained in inner group closure. Um, so definition, R is weakly F regular um, if all ideals are tightly closed. And R is F regular if for all prime ideals, uh, RP is weakly F regular. Weakly F -regular. Um, people have wondered for 42 years or something like that whether those are the same thing, 37, whatever the number is, long, long number. Um, and but we don't know. And R is F rational if for all per, um, parameter ideals, I uh, it, are equal to their, their time closures. Um, and it turns out that any regular ring is F regular. And that's how the term came into being. You know, that, 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 uh, um, that all ideals being tightly closed in all localizations um, uh, is, is like a kind of a weakening of, of the regularity property. So it's F regular. Um, so proof, um, let R be regular. Then by Auslander books from Serre. Um, RP is regular for all time ideals, right? Hence, we may assume RM is regular local, and you want to show all ideals are tightly closed. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let uh, X be let uh, I be an ideal in such a ring and take an element in its tight closure. Um, then what do you have? Then uh, there's a non-zero C uh, and a Q naught such that C X to the Q is in I bracket Q for all Q bigger than Q naught. Well, what does that mean? That means that C is in the intersection of all these Q's of IQ colon XQ, which by the flatness of Frobenius, right, is you can take the bracket power out of the colon. Okay. So then by the Crow intersection theorem, it follows that I colon X is not contained in M. Because the Kroll intersection theorem says that if you, that uh, all, the intersection of all the powers of M, even all the bracket powers of M would have to be zero, but C isn't zero. And C is in there and therefore, right? but then you have a local ring. So I colon M, I colon X is equal to R. So, because that's the only ideal that isn't in M. So that proves that X is in I. I colon X is equal to R means one is in I colon X, so one times X is in I. Um, so um, then there's this technical proposition about uh, system oh, parameter. Sorry to interrupt, I had a question real quick, if that's all right. Um, sure. So in your, your definition of F rational, it just made me wonder, are we assuming um, the ring is like F finite or excellent or anything like that? Um, not in the definition of it. Um, I guess, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming there is local. Okay. Um, so, and actually, now that I think about it, the way that I define F rational here is, um, is that uh, any ideal generated by a full system of parameters is tightly uh, closed. So, but it turns out that that's the same as saying that any ideal 
generated by part of a system of parameters. Let's type it closed. Um, uh, and hence the zero ideal is quite close because that's that's uh, uh, generated by an empty part of the of the system of parameters. Um, so R is reduced. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention here um, is that uh, if for every maximum ideal of R, um, every M primary ideals, M primary ideal is tightly closed, then it, then every ideal is tightly closed. Um, and basically, um, the both the proof of both of these things use a version of um, the Perlman section theorem. So maybe I'll just do that and then stop for the hour, and then we'll end up trying to do five, sections five, six, seven in the, in the third hour. Um, okay, um, proof. Um, let x1 through xd be a system of parameters. Um, and let i be generated by x1 through xt, where 0 is less than or equal to t less than d. Then for each positive integer u, um, if you take x1 through xt, and then you take the rest of them to the uth power, you're going to get a system of parameters. Right? Hence, what do we have? Um, I star is contained in the intersection over all these u's of x1 through xt, xt plus 1 to the u, xd to the u star, basically because tight closure preserves, um, uh, um, inter preserves um, containment, and I is contained in each of these ideals. Um, but then these, by assumption, we're assuming, so these are m-primary, we're assuming that m-primary parameter ideals are tightly closed. So this is the intersection of the u's of x1 through xt. Uh, along with these elements to the u, which is then contained in the intersection over all the u's of i plus m to the u, because each of these uh, other element, each of these generating elements here are in I, m to the u. And then this is, uh, by the curl intersection zero. And um, two is similar. You assume every uh, and primary ideal is tightly closed. Take an, take an arbitrary ideal, look at i plus m to the u for all u. Um, those are all tightly closed. i is the intersection of them. So i star is contained in all, all those stars, but all those stars are themselves. So um, all right, so it's 9.49, um, and I think, therefore, actually it's 9.50, so I think, therefore, I should stop there. Um, sorry, this ends up being faster than I was hoping, but anyway, thank you. Then uh, x... Qm is at the upper star of i of x. But by the algebra of, of bracket powers, which you'll do as an exercise, it, it, this also kind of works nicely. Um, and so lemma um, is Frobenius closure is a functorial closure operation on R modules, on the category of all R modules. Um, okay, so I guess I have, what, four minutes left before questions? Um, so I wanted to state one more 
theorem, and that has to do with regularity in the flatness of the kiss. Uh, but maybe I should do that next time, and instead I'll prove this. Uh, I'll prove this, and I'll get to the regularity next time. Okay. So, proof. Um, so let L be a submodule of M. We want to show that uh, the Cubini's closure of M is, in fact, a submodule. Okay. So let X and Y be in uh, Cubini's closure of L and M, and let R be in R. <clears throat> then what do you have? So X is in some LQM. Y is in, sorry, X to the Q is in LQM. Y to the Q prime is in LQ prime M. Um, so, and then what do you have? X plus RY to the Q, Q prime um, by the algebra of these powers is X to the Q, Q prime M plus R to the Q, Q prime y to the q, q prime m, which is x to the q m the q prime in something, plus r to the q, q prime, times y to the q prime in m to the q in something. Um, and then that's in lqm to the q prime, plus lq prime m to the q, and then that's lq q prime m. So it's a module. Uh, um, and uh, it contains L by setting Q equal one. Um, pre containment preserving uh, is, I, I claim, clear. I hope. Uh, <laughs> Basically, because KQM is contained in LQM, ready Q. Um, so let's just do item potence and functoriality. So let uh, X, let Z be an L for BDS closure of M for BDS closure in M. Okay. Um, then that means that there is a Q such that ZQM is in is in the Q's bracket power of the previous closure of M. Um, and um, so that means that there exists Y1 through YT in the previous closure of M and R1 through RT in R with ZQM is equal to the sum RI YI QM. Um, and each yi admits some q prime, some qi, with uh, yi to qi and m is in lqm because these are in the Frobenius closure of L and M. Um, should be a qi. Okay, so let q prime be the maximum of qis. and also Q. So just take the maximum of all those things and call it Q prime. Um, then Z to the Q prime uh, is equal to the sum from I equals one to the T, RI to the Q prime over Q, um, YI um, to the Q prime. Q prime is, is a multiple of Q, so that makes sense. Um, and, um, but each of these, um, are in, um, LQIM to the Q prime over QI, which is then in LQM, LQ prime. Yeah. So Z is in the previous closure of L. Um, and let's just do functoriality. Um, 
So let M be an R module. L and M and G are linear. And let Z be in the Frobenius closure of L and M. Um, then there's a Q with ZQ is in LQM. And again, by the algebra of Frobenius um, uh, powers, um, G of Z, Q. Um, is going to be in F E star of G of Z Q, which is in, sorry, that's equal to it, um, which is in F E star of G of L Q M. And then by the exercise, this is contained in G of L. Thus, G of Z is in G of L. So it's a nice functorial closure operation. I'm sorry I had to rush it. I'm sorry I, I did rush at the end. <laughs> I won't say I had to. All right. So, um, questions. We started a little late, so let's take a few minutes for questions. Yeah, I have a question, real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, for starters, I, I like this phrase meditate on Frobenius. I think that should have been my meditations on Frobenius should have been the title of my dissertation or something. But, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, um, uh, I did have a question. So, as you were defining kind of these, these abstract closures, um, you mentioned semi primality for ideal closures and functoriality for module closures. So I really, I can obviously see why functoriality is the right thing to look at for module closures. Like it makes a lot of sense that that's sort of very natural to run into. But for semi-primality, it seems a little less obvious um, as to why that's the natural thing to look at to me. Um, do you have any insight on why semi-primality might be natural to look at here? Well, I mean, if you care about primary decomposition, then uh, it has nice um, 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 uh, uh, I, I would say semi-primality is like the poor man's version of functoriality. It's I mean it ends up being equivalent to saying that any R linear map from R to R um, is uh, uh, preserves the, the the closure in this sense. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah it's actually equivalent because. R linear maps from R to R are the same thing as homothetics, right? The, the right. same thing is picking up of R and you know the map is multiplied by that element. And so this semi-prime thing says exactly that that's going to preserve that you know uh, I mean it basically says that the, that element A times the closure of I is contained in the closure of AI. Um, and uh, you know you can make sort of crazy crazy closure operations where that doesn't happen, but um, for instance, that happens in all these star and semi-star operations that the that the you know that, that's popular in the non-Ethereum world, and it's true in you know tight closure, previous closure, interval closure, radical. I mean, I don't know. It's not really a good re reason to say that it's that it's natural, but I mean to me, it's like um, functorial on maps to R. And not every closure operation has like a, the obvious way to define it on modules, like for instance, radical and even interval closure takes a lot of work to define it on modules. Um, and um, and so, you know, the semi-primality is a, is a stand in for that. Functoriality on homotheities. That's a good, good way to put it. Thanks. So, uh, Neil, are you saying integral closure of modules is a semi prime operation? Um, I'm saying it's functorial. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I hope it is. I think it's, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of, of integral closure of, of modules and like, um, but I think in all the in all the existing ones, they, they are actually functorial. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a question in chat. Mm -hmm. 
or is What's the relation between Frobenius closure and integral closure? Oh yeah, I'm gonna. Um, so uh, I was gonna get into that later in the lectures. Frobenius closure is so pretty. Um, it, 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 integral closure is bigger. Um, is 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 the short answer. But in fact, you have a whole uh, sequence of closures. On, uh, 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 um, so for any ideal I, the Frobenius closure of I is contained in the tight closure of I, which in turn is contained in the integral closure of I, which in turn is contained in the radical of I. Um, and and, and yeah, just like tight closure has uh, characteristic z zero analog does frobenius closure also have characteristic z zero analog um i don't think so um i mean i've never seen it i mean i guess you could try to do reduction to characteristic p i mean the natural thing would would be to say that in all the characteristic p models i'm sorry that in infinitely many characteristic p models the 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 that sort of the, ver the that characteristic p version of the element would be in the Frobenius closure of the characteristic p version of the of the ideal, but I mean, yeah, I've never seen anybody do that. Um, hmm. There, I mean, there's reasons like, I mean, um, for a long time people thought that that you know tight closure would have this property that if you know, if you're in the tight closure in all in infinitely many character CP models, that you're going to be in the tight closure in almost all of them. Um, but then uh, Brenner and um, uh, Katzman have a counterexample to that, so that's you know that's not true. Um, and it, but it was known from early on that that wasn't true with Frobenius closure. I have an example in my in my, in my lecture notes uh, at the end. Um, so, but yeah, um, I guess you could make that definition of Frobenius closure. But in general, Frobenius closure is considered to be more poorly behaved in many ways than tight closure. Um, mm -hmm. That's a, a segue to another question that I have. And this, I guess, is more related to, uh, to material from, from Craig's talk, so feel free to defer. But um, I'm very interested, personally, in my own research in studying Frobenius closure. Um, and in particular, I've been trying to develop the right you know, admit maybe it's it's out there, uh, but the right map theoretic notion to get integral closure of ideal, or sorry, Frobenius closure of ideals. So, is there a notion of you know maps to the right kinds of rings that when you can track back, you're going to get the Frobenius closure? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, let me just be careful. Um, yeah. So there's this thing called the um, I don't know if this maps to them, but I mean, I will say there's this thing called the perfect closure of of of, of a ring, which is the and you probably know about it, um, which is the um, uh, uh, just all the all the basically all the r to the one over q's at once, like the union of of the r to the one over q's in in that ring k that I that I showed, um, assuming the rings reduced, um, and uh, and so, and uh, and one way to find Frobenius closure is extend to that ring and contract that. Right. Um, and um, and similarly, you know, you look at the for a, for a module. If you have a module M, uh, you look at the natural map from M to M tensored with it's called R perf. It used to be called R infinity, but everyone says R perf now um, for perfect. Um, so you look at the map from R, uh, M to M to uh, M tensor R perf, and you look at your submodule L, and you look at the elements that that in that map land inside L tensor R perf. I mean, that's the elements of M that land in L tensor R perf, um, and you call, and then that's that's the Frobenius closure of L and M. Um, but I I don't know if that's what you what you're asking for. A little bit. I mean, so R to R perf is an example of a purely inseparable extension, right? So uh, I'm wondering if something like, you know, if you contract I back from the purely inseparable extension of even of certain flavors, that you'll get um, get the Venus closure. But anyway, this is a research question that's not maybe not appropriate for the science. So. <laughs> I, I bet that'll work. Oh, okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, maybe I'll follow up with you some other time. Thanks. Ah, sure, sure, sure.
Can I ask you something, Neil? Of course, I know. Yeah, uh, this is not regarding what you covered, but like, is this first part of your talk will broadly follow your paper on like closure operation in commutative algebra? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's sort of where I, I that, that's when I, I developed this, um, this approach um, is, um, yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's in there, yeah. Um, some version of that's in there, but I mean, some version of that's in the, in these lecture notes too, that, that you'll see soon enough. Um, yeah, you know, um, I wanted to do a survey and closure operations and I was the, and I thought, well, how broadly defined are these things? And like really broadly, they're even more broadly defined than this. After Moore did his stuff, um, then like, you know, uh, poset theorists said, okay, well, you can sort of define this on any poset. It doesn't have to be the, the poset of subsets of a given set. It can just be any partially ordered set. And then you, you change your containment relations to you know the, the the less than or equal to sign that exists in that poset, you still and and then it's still if it's a if it's a poset where where all arbitrary meets exist, um, then you know then then you, you still get this one to one correspondence that Moore um, pointed out in his paper 112 years ago. Um, so yeah, I mean it's very it's very general, um, and and that's you know they, they use that it's somehow in lattice theory in a way that I don't. Uh, that I've never looked into. <laughs> um, Any other questions? But yeah. I'm oh, sorry. But yeah, Kyle, I'll happily defer your question to anybody that might know more about it than, than I do. <laughs> Anyway, more questions. I've looked and it seems like no one has written about about. I mean, much less has written about Frenius closure closure, which is where I'm trying to make That's my right. niche. Yeah, so. No, it's great. 